Hello and welcome everyone to this special edition of the Living Healthy Today podcast. My name is Carolee Cohen. I'm a certified nutritionist, health and wellness consultant, sports nutritionist, weight management consultant, and master nutritionist, and have spent a lot of time trying to find health answers for myself. And today we're going to be diving into our second video of our four weeks to keto series. And so hopefully if you're here, you've already listened to the first video, the introduction video that talks a little bit about what keto is and how it works and some of the products we can use to make it even more successful. If you haven't, please go back to that video. But if you've listened to the introduction and you're ready to dive into breakfast, today we're going to talk about how to do breakfast like a pro. We're going to give you lots of recipes, lots of resources, tips to be more successful, some troubleshooting, and make sure that you're choosing your food wisely so you know how to read your labels as well. So today's going to be a lot of information. There's going to be a lot to learn. After this, it gets easier, I promise, because when you're new, you have the most to learn, right? So just hang with us, take a deep breath. We'll put all this information in the show notes and resources so you can download the slides, anything you want to keep track of because there's going to be a lot of information, so you'll probably want to do that. And with that, remember that any product information contained herein has not been evaluated by the FDA. Infinity or any other products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any other disease. We don't offer medical advice of any kind. Consult with your personal physician or other medical professional prior to adjusting any meds or starting any supplement programs. And remember, we're talking about a comprehensive system here, a challenge essentially, that promotes an active ketogenic lifestyle where we're gonna use some products, we're gonna use some nutritional supplements, and we're gonna make some dietary and exercise changes, right? So the average weight loss expectation is approximately one to two pounds per week, up to 15 pounds. And with that, just remember that your individual results can vary, and we'll jump right into it. All right. So one of the things that we need to remember is that the secret to success lies in our fat to protein ratios. This is really the key to success. So if you haven't already, I'm going to encourage you to watch our, I think it's about 10 minute video that really talks about what is ketosis. And that'll give you kind of the background for what we're going to talk about here. So the basic rule of thumb here is that to be in ketosis, your food at each and every meal, not a daily total, needs to have a two to one minimum fat to protein ratio and preferably probably a three to one if you're gonna be ideal, right? So this means that for every 10 grams of protein, you need to have at least 20 grams of fat. That's what we call a two to one ratio, 20 grams of fat to 10 grams of protein. A three to one ratio would mean that you were eating 30 grams of fat for every 10 grams of protein. Now, which ratio you're going to use often depends on your health concerns, your sensitivity to insulin, your blood sugar levels, and how much weight you have to lose. And as we go with this, we'll give you more details on what this means. So here are some of the situations where more fats required, where you're going to want to look more at that three to one ratio. If you're not sensitive to insulin, maybe you have insulin resistance, right? Or you're faced with any number of problems involving blood sugar. It doesn't matter if it's high or low or all over the place. You have a lot of fat or weight to lose. You or a child need lots of brain focus and mental support. And this is especially going to be the case if you're dealing with issues that might involve epilepsy or you know, seizures or autism, right, or something like an Alzheimer dementia situation. And now we're not making any claims that we treat, cure, or prevent any of those diseases, but these are some of the things that really we have to look hard at increasing this fat. Of course, if you're following a physician's advice, right, and sometimes physicians will actually prescribe the ketogenic lifestyle for people that are dealing with some of the severe brain conditions. Okay, now, Let's look at what the carb count should be. We focus mostly on the fat and protein, but we can't overlook the carbs either. So your total carb count for the day has to be under 50 grams. If you're over 50 grams, your chances of being in ketosis are very, very limited. For most people, it's not gonna happen. And for most people that are just starting, we're actually looking for 25. And situations where 25 grams of carbs per day is the best target, it's if you're not sensitive to insulin or you are facing problems involving blood sugar, you have a lot of fat to lose, you or a child need lots of brain focus and mental support, i.e. you have a lot of really big concerns, right, like we talked about previously, you'll see this list is the same exact as our last slide. So essentially, the more problems you have, the more weight you have to lose, 
the more you have to watch the carbohydrate count. So that's the simple rule of thumb. Over time, as your body becomes fat adapted and you start reversing those things, you can have a lot more flexibility. All right, so now we're going to talk about, when we talk about these ratios, what does this really mean? Um, let's look at a common food that's going to be in breakfast, but in a lot of other foods too. So the basic rule of thumb for cheese, if we look here, we have a whole bunch of different cheeses listed. And with the exception of cream cheese, you're actually going to see that in general, cheese is about equal amounts of fat and protein. So if we have this cheddar, we've got 9.4 grams and 7.1. You know, there's a little difference, but it's fairly one-to-one -one there. Same thing with mozzarella, the Swiss cheese, almost identical. Cottage cheese, you see, we actually go the other direction. There's 4.3 grams of fat and 13 grams of protein. Cream cheese is going to be the one exception. There's 7.9 grams of fat to 2 grams of protein. So unless your specific cheese label says otherwise, consider cheese to generally be about equal amounts of fat and protein. Cream cheese is the exception to the rule. Now, do I take it this close and worry about these 0.4s? No. When I see this one, I say it's 9 grams and 7 grams, and that's how I do the math. Mozzarella, I would say it was 5 grams and 7 grams. Call it good enough, right? I just round up to make it simple. Now, let's look at protein and fat in our meats. So we have some different meats here. Ground beef, the 80, an 80-21, 3 ounces is 17 grams of fat, 14 grams of protein. So again, you're going to see we're about 1 to 1, 17 to 15. Now, if we go down, though, we look at a, like a loin steak, we've got 12 grams of fat and 47.7 grams of protein, or 48. So we're four times the protein to fat ratio. So having a meal like this is very quickly going to throw you out of ketosis if you're not prepared to offset that. Ground pork, I have an 84.16. We're about one to one again. Pork chops. We've got a 10.2 gram to a 23.2 protein, so there's twice as much protein. And then we see the same thing as we look down at bacon. E almost equal fat and protein, sausage, almost equal, and chicken breast, skinless. We've got no fat in the skinless one and seven grams of protein. So you don't have to memorize all these numbers, and the slides will be downloadable and printable. But just remember kind of basic principles. Consider hamburger, bacon, and sausage to generally be about equal amounts of fat and protein. Steak, pork chops, and skinless chicken are going to be a lot higher in protein than fat. Okay, so let's look here. This is a side-by-side -side comparison from the National Chicken Council, right? And this actually shows us the difference between chicken with and without skin. Let's jump over here to the drumstick one, okay? So notice whether the chicken is skinless or not, we have about the same protein. It's 28 for skinless, 27 for with skin. But look at the fat. Skinless, we've got 5.7. With the skin on, we've got 11.2. There are a lot of really important nutrients in the skin, and it also adds tremendously to the taste. So when we're looking at keto, we want to include the skin if we want to really take up that fat content. Okay. And then we've talked a lot about fat, right? Because we always want more fat than protein, at least that two to one, ideally three to one. So here are some of our fat sources. And this is something you probably want to print so you have reference for it, right? But again, we've went through all our common fat sources, butter, coconut, MCT oil, et cetera, right? And just as the, the, the key takeaway here is that butter, coconut oil, MCT and lard, are going to be about 12 to 14 grams of fat per tablespoon. So, you know, if you need to add 12 or 14 grams, butter, coconut, MCT, lard, they're all going to cover it. They're about equal there. So that's an easy thing to use. Cream cheese, an ounce is going to add about 8 grams of fat. A lot of people like to add this to their eggs. Heavy whipping cream, about 6 grams. Of course, you have coconut cream. One of the highest fat, natural fat sources that is really easy to throw in any meal is going to be your avocado. Egg yolks can work. Macadamia nuts would come in second after avocados, olives. And then, of course, our fat bombs and desserts, which are obviously going to vary by recipe. And I will 
let's look for a minute. Let's go back to heavy whipping cream, full fat. Make sure when you're looking at whipping cream that you're getting full fat and not the light fat varieties. Because what happens whenever they take fat out is normally replaced with carbs, right? So you'll see that we have just a few, a little bit of protein, 0.3 grams and 0.4 net carbs, usually in heavy whipping cream. Coconut cream, you have to read your labels. Some are actually very high carb, some are zero carb. Avocados, you're, you see this where it has 6.8 grams of protein, so it's not all fat but it only has 7.4 net carbs. So sometimes people will look at an avocado and think that it has a lot of carbs. But to get the net carbs number, what we have to do is subtract the carbohydrates or subtract the fiber from the carbohydrates, and that gives us net carbs. And that's just because the fiber helps to slow down the way the body's breaking down the carbs and gives you more freedom in what you're eating. So you don't have to worry about the full carb count in avocados because of the fiber. And it's the same way with the macadamia nuts. The fiber takes, brings down that carb count. Again, to figure out net carbs, all you have to do is carbs minus fiber. Some labels even list net carbs now, making it really easy for us. Okay, so we used to eat much closer to keto without thinking about it. Our ancestors saved, cooked, and ate all fats such as bacon fat, lard, butter, ghee, they never did anything skinless, right? Chicken, duck, et cetera, and cream. Everyone had as much as they liked or was available. Now, I want to co comment on lard. A lot of the lard in the stores is hydrogenated. That is an extremely dangerous lard. Don't even think about using it. I'd rather you not use any lard than use that type of lard. You need to find an organic, grass-fed, non-hydrogenated lard, and it shouldn't smell bad either. The one that I like is from fannyandflow.net. I'll put that link in the show notes and resources. Their leaf lard is so delicate, it can actually be used in pastries. Keto-friendly keto ones, of course, right? But it's that light tasting. I love that one. And then, going back to how we used to eat, sugar was a treat, right? It was expensive. It was hard to get. And fruit was generally available only in season or sparingly throughout the winter because maybe they had preserved it, right? Now we can have as much fruit pretty much year-round, whatever we want, almost any time because it's at the supermarket, right? So that's our bodies weren't built for that constant influx of sugar. And today we're told to look for fat-free, reduced-free, everything, right? And again, when they take out the fat, they have to make it taste good because fat gives it satiation. It makes us full and it makes it taste good. So they replace it with sugar. So we end up consuming enormous amounts of both sugar and fruit. So what the ketogenic lifestyle in short does is it gets rid of so many of our modern day ills from extra sugar, extra chemicals, and returns us to more of a traditional style diet. Okay, let's talk about protein. This is another question that comes up all the time. How much protein should I eat? And what a lot of people do when they first start out the ketogenic lifestyle is they start eating a high protein, low carbohydrate, medium fat diet because they're not used to eating that much fat. And so protein is usually the highest number and we don't want that because remember we want twice, at least twice as much fat as protein. So the ketogenic lifestyle should be moderate protein, not high protein. Diet plans such as the Atkins diet are high protein, and keto should be high fat with moderate protein. While in ketosis, our bodies actually use and need less protein. For athletes, or if you are working out heavily, you may need more protein even while in ketosis to offset your workouts. Now, let me stop and explain for just a minute why this is such a big deal. If you're wanting to do keto to lose weight, reduce inflammation, balance your blood sugar, increase your brain clarity, raise your energy levels. A high protein, low carbohydrate diet, moderate fat is not going to do it because fat is the magic. Fat is what gives your body that slow, steady, sustained fuel source so that you can perform at your best. So you can feel energetic. Your brain can function beautifully. So you can go for long periods of time without needing to refuel. So remember that fat is the secret. A lot of people that eat high protein, moderate fat, and low carbohydrate still have struggles with energy, still don't get that good handle on their inflammation. So they're not the same thing. 
So here's the formula for calculating your protein needs. You take your weight, divide it by 2.2, and that's going to equal the grams of protein that you need. So if you weigh 188 pounds, you divide it by 2.2, you're going to be eating about 85 grams of protein. So you just start with the weight you're at, you can follow that guideline, and then as you lose weight, you can recalculate, right? So remember this formula is a guide, not an absolute. For example, if you're all of a sudden dealing with a menstrual cycle as a woman, you might want to increase your protein. You might need to alter these in order to feel good. That's entirely acceptable. Remember, this is a lifestyle, not a diet. So don't be afraid to adjust it if you need to. Now, let's talk about keto breakfast staples that are not high fat. We talked a little bit about this already. So if we look at eggs, one large egg, roughly equal amounts fat and protein. Bacon, one large slice, equal fat and protein. So take home message, bacon and eggs have almost equal amounts of protein and fat. Now you can increase egg yolks as a way to increase the fat as they don't have any protein. And with bacon, the other thing that people forget about, and this is why we think it's so high fat, is that when we cook it, the fat actually is cooked out. This is why a bacon and eggs meal by itself is not going to be keto. It's going to be high protein, low carb, moderate fat. So let's look at what's going to be wrong with this. And some of this you probably already have figured out. So the menu is two boiled eggs and two slices of bacon. So we did the rough math here for you. We've got about 16 grams of fat and about 19 grams of protein. Well, again, we've got a one-to-one -one fat to protein ratio. So we're not hitting that keto. How do I fix this? This is easy. I can add an avocado and it's fixed right off the bat. I can add in some keto coffee. I can add in some cream cheese into my eggs, right? Extra butter. You know, a lot of times right as the eggs finish cooking, I like to put in extra butter so I don't lose any of it and I get all that benefit and make sure I have that fat content. But we just need to increase the fat so we get back to our ratios. So that if we're having 20, 19 grams of protein, I'm gonna say 20 for easy math, we're looking at about 40 in fat. Now let's look at another example. What's wrong with this one? Sometimes people will have fruit for breakfast and they'll do keto approved fruit and think they're gonna be fine, right? Blueberries and raspberries, especially in moderation, are fine on the ketogenic lifestyle. But here's the problem. This is all carbs. There's no fat and there's no protein. Now you could make this better by adding lots of whipped cream. You could have keto coffee with it. You could have avocados with it. You could have one of the fat bombs, right? There's many, many of those. But what I would say about this is, do you see that carb count? We're still at 12 grams of carbs. And if we're trying to stay at 25, especially for being a little more strict, even if we're at 50, you're using up a lot of your carbs right away. So for someone starting with a ketogenic lifestyle, I probably wouldn't do this. I would probably spread that carb count out a little bit and have more fat and protein with breakfast, especially with breakfast. Because, and this is extremely true of someone that's struggling with blood sugar issues. I don't care if it's high or low, right? Or whatever it's doing. But what you eat for breakfast sets the tone for the entire day. It sets the tone for how your blood sugar is going to regulate all day long. So if you're gonna cheat, I would rather you cheat at lunch or dinner than at breakfast and mess yourself up for the entire day. Your body actually can handle it better at lunch and dinner. This is why making sure that your breakfast is right on is so important. If you start out the day wrong, you're messing yourself up for the next 24 hours quite literally. And this is also why some people choose to simply skip breakfast and do intermittent fasting, and it's for that blood sugar reason. Now, we'll talk about that later. That's not for everyone, not for all beginners. But I just want to make sure that you know that what you do for breakfast is incredibly important because it sets the tone for your entire day. It's sort of like for your blood sugar, it's like when you get up in the morning and you're in a bad mood. Maybe you get up and you stub your toe and that upsets you and things just keep spiraling from there and you have a terrible day. That's how your blood sugar is. If you get up in the morning and you have a lot of carbs 
or you don't eat a healthy breakfast, your blood sugar spirals for the rest of the day. Okay, so this menu was bacon and one of our amazing keto biscuits. Again, why I love the ketogenic lifestyle because we don't have to really give up hardly anything, including our high carb foods, right? We just make them healthier. So what I did here is I took all of the ingredients in bacon and keto biscuits that have any carbs, fat, or protein. I put them all together in this chart, and then I did the math here. So where you see it says the divided by 12, that's because obviously you don't eat the whole pan of keto biscuits at once. So what we ended up with between the bacon and the keto biscuit per serving, okay, this is per serving over here, we've got 11.25 grams of fat, Protein, we've got 5.52 grams. Carbs, we've got under a gram. Now, that looks pretty good, right? So the ratios are perfect. However, especially if you're active, this is a fairly low calorie breakfast. Even though the ratios are perfect, there's not a lot of protein. It's, it's a little bit low fat for keeping you satiated. So you're going to be hungry pretty quickly. So if this were me, and I was trying to be really fueled for the day and have enough energy to do all the things that I needed to do, I would simply look at eating more food. So the body needs to have the fuel and energy. It needs to, if you make the body think it's starving, it's going to stop dropping weight if that's your goal. And so don't do that. Don't be afraid to eat more food. So some of the things that we can add are some of the things you're going to see on this list. So these are top keto tips from our keto chef, Jennifer Winder, of course, who wrote the Make It Keto cookbook. Again, the eggs, bacon, cheese, like we already talked about, are one-to-one -one fat to protein. So you could add cream cheese to those eggs. You could have an avocado or guacamole or sour cream. You could add extra butter on that keto biscuit we just talked about or coconut oil. And I already talked about adding butter toward the end of cooking your eggs so you don't lose it. You could have a lemon sour cream muffin. These are actually such a filling recipe that they are, they can be a meal in and of themselves. You could have heavy whipping cream in your coffee or you could have keto coffee. You could do a keto pizza, pancakes, waffles, crepes, etc. So you can add whatever you like to this menu to just increase the food. And again, this is one of the things that makes keto so freeing is that this is not a rabbit food deprivation style lifestyle. You eat very, very well. And again, remember that you need to follow the macro ratios for each meal. And by macro ratios, it should really say the fat, protein, carbohydrate ratios. So don't eat, say, keto approved berries only for breakfast and use that as your carbs for the day. You want to spread those carbs out. And it always has to be balanced with fat. Okay, and then let's talk just a little bit more about the carbs. Remember that most people have to be under 50 grams. Really, everyone does. And for many people, it's going to be under 25, especially at first. Most of your carbohydrates should come from vegetables. And I would just say be wary of recipes that combine many types of veggies as the carbs can add quickly. So like if you've got a vegetable soup with six or seven types of vegetables, Make sure that you're doing okay there. Salads can be an issue that way too. And there's some great salad recipes that are perfect. We'll share that as we move on into lunch, right? So stay with veggies that grow above ground, generally speaking, are going to be fine. The exception that grow underground that you don't have to worry about are radishes and onions. Some of the others that grow underground that are a problem are going to be like your potatoes, um, carrots, and then you, you wanna be cautious with squash. We have lists of all this. If you go to the Getting Started section of Keto Made Easy, there's actually lists of foods that are keto approved. So you can download those as well for reference, and we'll post the links to those in the show notes and resources. And then just as a quick recap, general guidelines, fat, a minimum two to one fat to protein ratio. If you do three to one, you will see those health conditions, especially the fat loss, improve better. Protein, you want to use this formula to calculate your protein needs. Divide your body weight by 2.2. Carbs, a maximum of 50. And for many people, closer to 25. And then 
to track or not to track what you're eating, right? So this is a good question, and it's not the same answer for everyone. You need to find the way that works best for you. When I went looking for all this information that we've talked about, about fat and protein and things, I use the Keto Diet app. It's about $6.99. I absolutely love it. And it is specifically developed for Keto. I don't recommend my fitness pal and there's a lot of other apps I wouldn't use either because they're the data is uploaded by individual users. There's a lot of mistakes. It gives you kind of strange recommendations since it's not geared for keto. You can also simply write things down. You can use Excel. You can use a pen and paper. Just if you're going to track, track your favorite recipes once, save the info and you are set. Look for, and this is a big tip that will save you a ton of time, by the way. Look for cookbooks or recipes where the fat, protein, carb, Ratios are already done for you. Make It Keto has that. It's all listed out. Sweet and Savory Fat Bombs is another one. The Keto Diet. Some of the recipes on Keto Made Easy, and there's going to be some other websites. We have all those cookbooks and where you can get them listed on Keto Made Easy, actually under cookbooks. I would suggest tracking your carbs until you are comfortable. Most people are fall into the trap of doing low-carb, high protein, moderate fat until they really get used to this. And sometimes until you track, you're not aware of some of the mistakes you might be making. You, and it's also easy to do a lot more carbs than you're thinking just as you're not used to it. So I personally feel that some tracking in the beginning is helpful. But you know, once you figure out a few mills, you make notes, you don't need to ever think about it again. Don't track calories ever. There's only one exception. And it really is goes back to what I just finished saying. If you are eating high protein and then you're trying to double your fat calories so that you're at that two to one fat to protein ratio, that's about the only time we see people eating so many calories that they're starting to gain weight. But if your protein is in line with what you need for your body weight, your body weight divided by 2.2, then your calories should fall right in line. And the basic rule of thumb with keto, if you don't know what to do, if in doubt, eat more fat always. Fat almost solves everything when you're following the ketogenic lifestyle. Now, we're going to talk about clean keto versus dirty keto. You know, you do not want to trade one toxin for another because they all cause disease and contribute to health problems, right? So you don't want to get rid of all this sugar out of your diet and these unhealthy carbs and yet start, because you shift a certain food, start consuming crummy versions of them that lead to more health conditions. So the first one I want to talk about is nitrite and nitrates. Now these damage blood vessels and arteries, especially in the kidneys. They are one of the causes of why we have so, such a rise in kidney disease actually. So you'll see here at the bottom in blue it says nitrates and nitrites contribute to severe kidney damage, promote the growth of certain types of cancer, and are recognized by the World Health Organization as carcinogenic. And I know what you're thinking, how do I do this safely? Well the answer is simple. You simply look for the uncured versions. So bacon, sausage, pepperoni, ham, summer sausage, hot dogs, deli meat, so like your ham, turkey slices, Canadian bacon, all of these by default have nitrites and nitrates as preservatives. Make sure that you get the uncured, not preserved ones. If they say they have celery juice, that's a more natural version, that's a much better idea, you're going to be okay there. So you don't have to cut any of these out, and all of your Walmarts, Costco's, Targets, etc., should be carrying these. You shouldn't have any problem finding these at the stores where you already shop. Also with meats, I'm going to hugely encourage you to get, look at the least for hormone-free, um, no antibiotics, and grass-fed or organic. Meat is so loaded with toxins. Just be as careful as you possibly can. You know, if you can't find it in the stores, which it is much easier to find in the stores now, see if you've got any local farmers or any local groups that you can connect with. I know even here in the middle of the city, we have farmers that come in like to our Cabela's and park here. And I found that out through Google, right? Because I didn't know that. But they actually bring in completely organic grass-fed meat from their farms. They sell it directly to us. It's super reasonable. So almost everywhere, there's going to be a solution here. The other thing 
that has gotten really crazy recently is we have seen that some of our meat is actually magnetized with some of the toxins that are in some of our vaccines these days. And so you really don't want that. And in checking my meat to see if it was magnetized consistently, the organic and more natural versions are not, while the others are. So this is a very big deal. So pay attention to the meat that you're getting. Get it as clean as you can and avoid these things. Now, let's talk about eggs. You want to look for organic or grass-fed eggs. And again, this is a huge deal. The way eggs are raised in conventional chicken operations are loaded with antibiotics, hormones. There's a lot of disease. There are so many issues. They're really not that healthy. And when you taste farm-raised eggs that are raised normally in the natural process, organic and grass-fed, they taste so much different too. This again is something you can find in any store. And I would encourage you to look at local farmers. They're often a lot cheaper there if you have access. Um, coconut oil, we have to make sure that we're getting ideally organic and cold pressed. Cold pressed, even if you can't get organic, just because we want to make sure that it's not processed with heat. Heat causes the structure of the coconut oil to degrade and makes it more rancid. And again, the more of an item you use in your cooking, the cleaner you want that source to be. So most people use a lot of eggs. They use a lot of coconut oil in their cooking when they're cooking keto. So don't go cheap on those. Butter, grass-fed or organic, um, this is a big deal. Butter actually has some of the same problems that we talked about with eggs and coconut oil. And let's talk about that for just a minute. So toxins, whether they're antibiotics, growth hormones, chemicals that are actually in the food these animals are being fed, found in conventionally raised chick cows and chickens, store in the fat and eggs. So that means that when I've got a fatty substance like butter and eggs, those toxins can actually migrate from the animal and store in those places. So you do not want conventional sources. The Kerrygold brand and Organic Valley make great butters. Those are really easy to find. If you're allergic to cow's butter, you can even get some of the goat butters. And one of the fascinating things about butter is that if you get are getting the grass fed, it's going to be much higher in that congelated linoleic acid, CLA. And CLA actually plays a critical role in maintaining cell integrity, your hormones, inflammation, and promoting brain health. So there really are more nutrients in the butter as well. And then with that, this is a huge one. I don't care what kind of lifestyle you're following. Please, please get rid of all of your vegetable oils, including olive oil. You want to use butter, coconut oil, and healthy sources of non-hydrogenated lard. Butter, coconut oil, and non-hydrogenated lard can all withstand high heats. What happens when we heat vegetable oils? including olive oil, is that they turn into free radicals and trans fatty acids. We do not want that. What that does inside the body is it causes instability. So it actually attacks healthy cells, takes away electrons, creates unhealthy cells, and we get to free radicals. And free radicals cause disease. And here's a quote from Healthline. It says, vegetable oils are loaded with trans fats. These fats are highly toxic and are associated with an increased risk of various diseases like heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and obesity. And in fact, if you've seen studies where the ketogenic lifestyle was actually promoting cardiovascular disease, um, kidney damage, diabetes, right? It was when people were doing ketogenic the dirty way. And this is why we make such a big deal about this. You have to be smart about it. So if you're using, if we go back here, if you're using meat, and a lot of them that are loaded with nitrates and nitrites, see all this list here, they all have it in them, you're going to be damaging your kidney. So sure, if we do a study and you're eating a lot of that food, it's going to look like it's an unhealthy lifestyle, when in fact it's the toxins. If you're getting some of these toxins through the eggs, coconut oil, and butter that we were talking about, you're going to see the same thing. It's going to look like it's hard on your cholesterol levels, on your heart health, because it's the toxins that are actually making it be a problem. And vegetable oils are probably the worst. And we're talking about canola, olive, sunflower, flax, all of them. Don't even go near them. 
Now, the problem with olive oil is that it's a fragile oil and it's not very stable. It's a natural oil, but as soon as the oil is pressed out of the olive, it's starting to degrade. So when you get your olive oil, you don't know how long it's been in transit, and usually it's six months by the time it gets to at least to us here in the U.S., six months from the time it's been produced to it's brought over to you're buying it off the store shelf. So it's had a long time to start degrading. Now, if you're squeezing the olives, you're totally fine to, to use it, right? Because you know that the oil is fresh. If you use it sparingly in moderation, you know, I'm not saying you can't do that, but it's not an oil of choice, and it degrades very quickly when you heat it. It's not a safe oil to heat. Avocado oil is a newer oil on the market. It's a little bit safer, and that's because it has some antioxidants in it that keep it from degrading, but it's sort of in the middle. You're still going to be better off with butter, coconut, and non-hydrogenated lard. Okay, so here are some of the resources you can from wellnessspringsinc.com. You can get the Keto Made Easy Cookbook and the Is Keto Right For Me that we talked about in the introduction. Here at ketomadeeasy.com forward slash breakfast, you can find keto breakfast recipes. We have a whole bunch there. And then if you go to this link, tinyurl.com forward slash breakfast 23, you can find all of the keto breakfast recipes and the keto fuel recipes in one place. Now I'm going to skip forward to this slide. When you talk about our keto fuel, remember this can be used as a breakfast all by itself. It's a meal replacement, right? Super easy. So a lot of times if someone wants to jump out of bed and not really have to think about breakfast, this is what they'll do. They'll take it with them. They'll take it to work and it's perfect. But don't just think of it as a meal replacement shake because as you explore these recipes, you're going to see that the keto fuel is the base for so many recipes that we can do for breakfast. I mean, strawberry shortcake, waffles, crepes, pancakes, right? And so much more. There's so many things you can do with this keto fuel. If we go back, that's why I mentioned the Keto Fuel Recipes, because this link is going to give you, I believe there's 15 different flavors you can do, from changing it to pumpkin to chocolate, right, to more of a latte style. So there's so many things you can do. And if you're looking for any of the Core Nutrition or Keto products, either get back with the person who shared this video with you, or you can reach out to me, and we can connect you with where you get those from. And then you can always go to the Living Healthy Today podcast at livinghealthytoday.podbean.com. And that brings us to our core pack. This is what we talk about in Tools for Success is core nutrition. And again, we talked about this in the intro video, but I just wanted to remind you that this core package is going to help make sure that we're managing that inflammation, detox, digestion, energy, and stress. We're getting a lot of antioxidants, a lot of immune support, thyroid and kidney support, cardiovascular and circulation support, and we're supporting our blood sugar levels on a whole other level. People that follow the ketogenic lifestyle with these products get far better results than people who don't. It's just easier. And then we already talked a little bit about our keto fuel. Remember that you can use the burn if you're dealing with cravings. We talked about the coffee. We have the infinity that kind of acts as that fat blocker to redirect the fat back to your brain. This is a great one to add for extra fat as well. And then Kick can provide those exogenous ketones. And we're going to spend just a minute talking about intermittent fasting because this is a super popular topic. And some people do it, and you can do it even if you aren't doing keto. I personally have done intermittent fasting for years now. I can't imagine eating three meals a day. But that's just me, and that works for me. If I was a farmer, a construction worker, a busy mother, it may not work. I may want to eat breakfast because I may actually burn that many calories, right? But living a more office lifestyle, I just don't need that many calories, and I'm simply not hungry. So you can always do that if you want to skip breakfast. For some people that are dealing with blood sugar issues or have a lot of weight to lose, a lot of people are sort of conditioned their metabolism to eat in the morning, so you, so you may struggle starting out that way. I don't automatically recommend people start out that way, but if you don't feel like eating in the morning, you know, go for it. You can dive right in that way. I love the, ke the keto coffee because it actually has some extra fat in it, and a lot of people will use this as something that gives them a little bit of energy but doesn't break that intermittent fasting. 
You can take some of the Infinity Oil, again, to help with just giving you a little bit of energy, a little extra fat, a little get up and go. And don't forget that the Keto Coffee has a very special blood sugar supporting ingredient. So it really helps to level out blood sugar. You can use this as a breakfast replacement. You can use it as a pick-me-up in the afternoon. It can replace your coffee anytime, right? And I want to point out that coffee is the most pesticide-laden beverage in the world, second only to tobacco. So this is an organic coffee. You do not, whenever you, again, whenever you see a study that says coffee's bad for you, it's usually bad for you because of the toxins in the coffee. Coffee itself is not actually bad for you from a health perspective, right? So with that being said, this is an organic coffee with that added, added extra fat. So a great thing. And if you want to learn more about intermittent fasting, the tools, tips, what to do, what not to do, as well as longer fasting, then you can go to the link you see on the screen. We'll post it in the show notes and resources. That entire episode is dedicated to fasting information. And that brings us to the end of week one, breakfast. In next week's episode, we're going to talk about lunch and eating out. And yes, you can do the ketogenic lifestyle while eating out, believe it or not, quite successfully. All it takes is understanding what you're doing and what to look. We're going to provide a lot of actual restaurant information in our next video, video three of our four weeks to keto. I know today was a lot of information, but dive right in, take it one thing at a time, and just get started. Getting started is better than being perfect. You'll learn as you go, and pretty soon you'll be an absolute expert. Thank you so much, and we'll look forward to seeing you for our third video, Week 2, Lunch and Eating Out.